Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dora the Fluid Crafter and we are going to do the back part of the altered book that I showed you we did in the front and I want to show you how I did that. So let's get started on that. First thing that I want to do really quick that I forgot to grab is my other paint brush. Give me two seconds here. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a napkin uh, that you would like to cover the insides with. You can even do it on the outside of the book as well. So here is a good option if you want to decoupage a napkin or something onto something else, but you don't want it to be tacky. Sometimes when I do decoupaging my pages will stick together because depending on the climate when it's really warm sometimes that Mod Podge or the homemade Mod Podge the watered down glue whatever you're using will get sticky again and so then your pages stick together and you know let me get a piece of tape here really quick because I can't peel that up so we're going to do it the old fashioned way. Okay. All right. A starting point here. And this is one layer. I think there is a, another layer on here. I do believe. I do believe. Let me double check here. The other one had two layers. Yep, there it is. There it is. Okay. Now we're in business. to the side okay so I like the uh, flip it over here I like the rough braille feel of this and so I'm flipping it the other way so I can have some of that on this page for texture if you flip it the other way it's smooth but I like it this way and so this is how I want to put mine on so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my little cup of Mod Podge here that I had out from the front page. Keep that open so it doesn't <laughs> become a mess. <clears throat> and I'm just going to use my paintbrush and I am going to start back some away from that edge. I'll get up to that edge in a minute. And I want to go all the way to the top. I want to get all the way up there. And then I'm just going to dab close to this edge here. putting a lot on. I'm not, you know, being slim with it. <clears throat> and then I'm going to hold it up off my desk so I can get the edges here. Really good. I'm going to go back 
back over that just a little bit. I don't think I got enough on there. There we go. Okay, and then once you have it coated, you guys know this part, I'm sure. You want to lay your napkin on there. Now, I personally, I do not, um, I don't mind the wrinkles. I like the wrinkles, and I'll show you why I like those wrinkles in a minute. Let me pull that up. I need to get, there we go. So I want to get closer to that edge. And before I start pressing down, I just kind of start at one end, and I pull it up as I go just to to kind of smooth it out. Like I said, I'm not worried about the wrinkles in it because I'll show you why. And just lightly push that down. Okay. And then the, <laughs> the next part, of course, is to go over your napkin. And so I'm just going to add some in spots. And then go over. And I'm doing this lightly. I'm not doing it, you know, really hard or anything. I'm just doing it lightly. Because I don't want to actually rip the napkin. And you can rip the napkin if you do it too hard. Or too much in one spot. So keep that in mind also when you're doing this. Always make sure you have enough glue or Mod Podge on your brush. When you pull it, it's not um, sticking to the brush. I'm trying to keep it from making that noise, but my finger is also sticking to the napkin. So I apologize for the tapping. I may have to get some more in my cup, and that's okay. I'll just grab some in a moment. I got a string. I got an ooey string. Let me get that out of there. Get that over there. Okay. And it's okay if you miss a couple of spots because when we do the next step, you'll understand why I say that. Let me see if I can get any more out of here without grabbing. Yeah, I can do a little more. There we go. Okay, so now I've got mine basically coated down pretty well. I'm not going on that edge. I'm actually going to rip that off. So there is that portion of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off around the edges first, and I'm just going to pull it down and with the glue on there it makes it a lot easier to pull off I'm not worrying about the the, the jagged edges that's okay that doesn't bother me I'm just trying to pull off most of that access or Excess, that's what it's called, access. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my words escape me. Or I say something and it's totally not what I meant to say. Okay. And then on the inside here, right here, I also want to take that edge off. How do we do that? It's a little oh. pokey tool that I got with my book binding kit. And I just pulled down right here first, just to get that started. If I, there we go, if I can pull it up. And then I just 
pull down. Don't care if it's straight, doesn't matter. I just don't want it to be in that crease where it might compromise how the book closes. And then I'm going to put that into the trash. Clean off my pokey tool with my fingers. And then I'm just going to lay that back down is all. I'm not pushing hard, just very lightly. Okay. Then I'm going to take my blow dryer. Okay, now, you will notice when you do this, it will curve a little bit here. And all you have to do, while it's warm, is just push it back. Like that. And it goes right back to the way it was. But you have to do it while it's warm. Okay? Okay. See? Now it's back. Okay, so now it's not fully dry underneath, but it's dry enough to where I touch it, I don't get any glue on me. So here's the next step, the fun part, for me anyways. It's so easy. Gesso. I know a lot of you guys use gesso. I love gesso. If I can get it out of my container here. There we go. But you want to, I just splashed it all over my face. Uh, but you want to do uh, dry brushing. So make sure you have some scrap paper. Let's sit that right there for a moment. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper here. So this here brush is too big to put in there, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the corner. Well, nope, can't do that. Actually, I think I'm going to just rip some of the cup off to get that corner of the brush down in there. Probably should have picked a smaller brush, but I got some that are I need to wash out. So anyways, I'm just going to take the corner. Okay, get you some on there. Tap it on your scrap page. Okay. And so you just want your brush to barely have any on it, if that makes sense, okay? So what you're doing, essentially, is brushing over the texture. So you can still see the background, but you're bringing all that texture out. And when it dries, you cannot see, or you can't feel the tackiness, but you can still see the um, texture piece and you can still see the um, uh, design and, and things so yes that's why I like the braille to show up on this side you can do it as light as you want as dark as you want as long as you are covering the whole piece with the gesso so that way it doesn't stick to the pages um, that are that's like right here or anything that you may put on here to make with it so okay and so I've went over the whole thing with the gesso so next I'm going to dry it again and then we can do some highlighting so two seconds does it take long for this to dry Okay, so now we have um, no more stickies, right? Now you can go back over it with gesso um, if you wanted to keep the white. And uh, let me grab some more out of here, and I'll show you a little spot to do how you can do that. Same thing, but you want to put a little bit more and just use a spot, a, a, a certain spot. And you just want to kind of go over it very lightly like so and then take the dry side and fan it and you get to see all that little braille on there if you can't see it yet I'll bring it up a little bit closer for you because I do want to make this section stand out a little bit more there we go 
down here in the corner. And so now I'm just kind of going over the wrinkles a little bit to kind of make them stand out. And like I said, I'll bring it up a little closer to you so you can see it. And not the whole thing, just in certain areas. Let me grab some more. I'm actually just going to... There we go. Okay, so let me see if I can get this up to where you guys can see it. Let me see if I can focus. And I'm not sure if you guys can see where some of it is highlighted or not. And I'll move the book just a little bit. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. I'm not sure if you can or not, but there is something else you can do to, even, to make it stand out even more. And I am going to be doing the front part like this also, but I was waiting for the gesso to dry. Um, so that way, you know, I could have all that good stuff done. And so what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, dry this off really quick. And I'm going to go back to the front to show you. It won't take but two seconds. Okay. And so now we have the front section here. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have these little blending brushes. I had picked up a couple from the um, from the dollar store, and they worked so good. I could not believe how well they looked. So, because this has a brown in it, and this is just green and white, I do want it to sort of blend together. Now, I'm not doing a lot, very little just like as if you were dry brushing the gesso on very little if you get too much you'll get this big blob and it might not look so good and so you want to just start very lightly around the edges here and you'll see it start coming up in a moment and then like i said very lightly and i'm going to turn it this way a little bit let me see there you are and I am just barely going over this. And pretty much where the um, wrinkles are and the texture is, is what I'm doing. And so the texture will stand out away from the white and kind of give you a... a like a different look you know what I mean I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this the right way or not but it'll kind of make it match with you know what my project is so that's what I'm doing and I am just lightly very lightly going over some of these texture spots to kind of bring that page over here but also keeping, you know, the the green nat nature natural color in there as well. So I'm going around the edges, and then just kind of picking some spots here to highlight. And 
you can always go over it and, and do a little bit darker in places if you want to. Um, I may do that on the back. I'm not sure yet. But I would like a little bit more around the edge here. Just to kind of really give it that uh, vintage feel. And see here, I pressed too hard, so now I got this really dark color. <laughs> and I'm going to see if I can blend it in here. There we go. I'll just remove some. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And so now I'll bring that up and see if you guys can see that better than the, than the white. And so I'll put it kind of at an angle and then see if you guys can see the difference. Maybe not on camera or on video, but I'll take some pictures. Um, but it's really light, light, you know, just around and highlight some of those areas. And this way it's... Um, it kind of, like I said, it kind of like this is the dark brown vintage, and so it'll kind of pull it together in the long run. Okay, and so on the back, I have more uh, wrinkles and stuff. So let's see if we can get a better, um, a better look on this side. Okay, I'm going to press just a little harder on this side. around the edges anyway to get that to really come out because I do like the the way the edges with that um, that embossed like I said it's like um, it almost feels like braille Okay, and so here we have some spots. There's some texture to bring out. That looks really good, actually, a little bit darker. So I may do the front a little bit darker. And it's all about, you know, checking it out, see what looks good what doesn't look good uh, but always go soft first you can always do more later if you like the way that it's looking you know and just kind of venture out and see what looks good and what doesn't and um, that's what I'm doing I am just venturing out it almost kind of looks like wallpaper like this which is really cool. Like all the cracks and stuff in it. You know, like over time, wallpaper gets that aged, cracked look to it. So that looks super cool. Yeah, that look actually, that looks a lot better. I think I'm going to do that on the front. So let's see if we can get this one to show up on the screen better. So you can see it a little bit here. But let me see if we can see it up here. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to or not. I hope you can. Because it's really cool. It is so, so cool looking when you do it like this. So, yes. Okay, so there is the front and the back. Simple, easy ways. Just use a little gesso over top and then you can ink and this and that so I have all my pages glued together and I did want to show you guys something so um, my um, uh, my first page here so it's a fold out so it can you can fold out and journal and so this page matches this page and so it can fold down and flip. Now, looky, do you see that? Do you see where it goes like that? Now watch this. Flat. 
You see, it doesn't do that. So here's here's the thing with that, okay? When you're doing it like this because you're manipulating this, okay? There's an air bubble trapped in here, right? Okay? And with that air bubble, the pages are stuck, okay? So don't fret about that, okay? Because a book is supposed to naturally flow, and you're interrupting that natural flow, okay? But this becomes a fat pocket in there. Tons of stuff can be put into that. You see that? Okay, so when you start putting stuff in here and start shoving stuff in here, like I'll show you really quick, okay? It's not going to lay flat anyway. So keep that in mind. Also, when you start decorating and you're adding laces and things, things will start getting heavy and start pushing down, making the pages flatter. So I'm going to hold it up like this so that way you guys can see. So I have all of my pages completely glued. They're all dry and I made a mistake. First mistake. So this was supposed to be a top pocket and this was supposed to be a side pocket. <laughs> I glued here instead of here. So this is open. And so now what I'm going to do is have this a pocket and then a big pocket here and then I'm just going to decorate this section right here so that way the bee stands out. Not a big deal. We can always work around it. All right. So here are the pages. I think it came out so well. It is absolutely beautiful. I love this kit. Oh my gosh, I love this kit so much. I love nature. I love bees, birds, butterflies, and all that good stuff. So, in each one of these journaling pages, it's either a top pocket or a side pocket. So, there's extra storage in there also. So, you can see how some of my pages are still kind of bowing this way. And the reason for that is because that's the way I was pressing on the pages. So when I press the page down, they bowed that way. So if that's happening, don't don't stress about it, okay? Don't stress about it. So um, that's what I'm doing for this. I've started working on the uh, journaling cards and sewing around them. And I've just backed them onto cardstock. And that way um, these can be inserted for journaling or for bookmarks or as um, you know whatever and the green back here I did a dark green one to match the um, the kit but also these uh, darker backgrounds are wonderful for gel pens if you like to write with the gel pens or if you want to write a secret message you don't want anyone to read or be able to read right away I like writing on the darker because I can get my thoughts out, but then it doesn't really look like anything's been written on it, if that makes any sense. So that's what I wanted to, to do for those. And then I also have um, some of the tags backed on cardstock and things that I'm working on. So our next video is going to be decorating and doing ephemera and doing little things and such because in an altered book, you can't just take your pages to your sewing machine, right? <laughs> so, we are going to be doing things to put inside this book. So, I hope you guys will stay tuned. Don't forget, I have a giveaway going on, so go back and find that video. I'll have it linked out in the description box. And please, come and join the fun. It is my road to 300 subscribers, and I would really like for you to join in. Alright guys, stay blessed and be creative, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.